Stephen Goodfellow, who was uh, at that time uh, studying uh, getting a master's degree at Wayne State. He was a printmaker, and uh, so he had uh, been working with the three color process of uh, printing, or even four color, and uh, printing it more often used. I was also taking lithography. It's a water based technique, and it works with you again, you work with a metal plate, but you've got uh, uh, it's basically uh, water and oil as the principle of, of lithography. Where the uh, oil is, the, the ink will attach. Where, there's, where the water is, the ink will repel. The, the concepts are very similar uh, in, um, in, in, in that to what evolved into micropointillism. And also, with just regular color printing that you see in a magazine. Like if you look at a, a picture in a magazine with a microscope, you'll see it breaks down into yellow, red, and blue, and black. They use black, they use four colors in, in that printing process. Describing micropointillism is much, when, you, when you're through listening to the description, you'll wonder why on earth anybody wanted to do it. But it's in fact kind of like riding a bicycle. Uh, once, you, uh, once you attempt it and try it, you realize that you, you have an innate ability to, uh, to work with it. Now to make a micropointillist painting uh, involves making a painting in three stages. You essentially make a painting with yellow, and then on top of that, red, and then blue. So uh, you uh, block the areas that you don't want to have any, um, any um, color whatsoever. And we, we start with yellow. If you think of masking tape, it's real easy to understand. You put masking tape down, you spray some paint on, you rip it off, and actually it's going to be white under the paint. Well, now if you just do that so that you, in this case, we use a liquid solution. Originally, uh, we used uh, gum arabic, but we found that to crack and everything, and later we found silt screen blockout, which is used in making silt screens. So, any area I don't want yellow, I block. Any area I want to have uh, a, a pure blue or a pure red, I'll block at this point here. So, I sometimes call this technique backward painting. Every paint, any place the brush touches, there'll be no paint. And so, you know, block these areas, and then I take an atomizer, which is basically a little tube like this, so it goes down, I stick it into the, uh, into the liquid, and uh, you blow on it, and uh, you can also use a, a compressor with an airbrush. The spatter then lands on the canvas. It looks, as you step back from it, it looks like uh, the first coat is a, a, like a light yellow, which is an illusion. It's not a light yellow. It's little spatters. Uh, that are far apart from each other on a white, white, white background. Um, but the area that didn't have, uh, uh, the areas that were covered with the uh, block, they don't get any uh, spatters on the canvas. They're shielded, the canvas is shielded. Now, the, the way the variety of color is created is by uh, making the painting in shades of each color. So, for instance, if you start, first of all, with a, uh, a drawing, um, and you, that on a white canvas, your given color is white. So in the end, anything that appears white is merely a hole in the painting. Now um, I'll block some more areas, and I'll spray some more yellow on it, and now it's a dark yellow, let it dry. I'll block some more areas, I'll spray some more, I'll block, spray, block, spray, block, spray, and finally you end up with it just, you're spraying yellow on yellow at this point here. You take the take a hose 
after it's dried of course and you wash down the canvas and you're left with the tonal different tonalities of yellow from uh, from a, a light yellow to a dark yellow look at underneath a microscope and you see it's just little spatters uh, of very varying densities that's all it is now uh, you let the canvas dry, you do exactly the same process except this time you use red. So I'm blocking areas that I don't want to have any red in and uh, I'll spray a light spray of red over it. Now uh, I'll, I'll let that dry, I'll block some more areas, I'll spray again, I'll block, I'll spray, I'll block, spray, block, spray, block, spray, and then there you are again, you've got yourself a real intense red uh, canvas. Take a hose, wash it down and now it gets more interesting now you don't just have the tonalities of yellow you've got the tonalities of the red and the yellow so you've got all your oranges you've got pinks uh, it's, it's looking a lot more interesting you've got yellows you've got reds um, now uh, you block the uh, the canvas again and you spray blue this time and uh, you let it dry you block some more you spray you block you spray you block and now the canvas is starting to look like puke it really looks pretty horrible and um, you know what's going on, uh, but the rest of the world has no idea what's happening under there. And by the time you fin finish with the final coat of blue, uh, you're just looking at this bleh canvas. And that's the, this is the sneaky part, because uh, this is the point where you can now take your canvas, which you're going to wash down, but if you invite uh, uh, anybody along who wants to see uh, what a micropoint piece looks like when it's being washed down, it's the most spectacular thing, because when you wash it down, you're seeing it for the first time. Uh, so you're kind of surprised at what's going to happen. And everybody else is real surprised mm -hmm. as this puke-like painting slowly starts to reveal its colors. And it's, it's pretty impressive. It, it's, it's a little bit... I've never never done heroin, but it's got to be, be a lot like shooting up with heroin uh, because it's an incredible buzz when you see the picture in its, in its, finish, in its finished state. Now... If you were to go in here with a little 30 power microscope and look at some of these uh, lighter areas in here, you'll see it breaks down into tiny dots of yellow, red, and blue that the eye is mixing to create the illusion of all these other colors. So that is micropointalism painting. It was a whole new medium. No one had ever done this before. We were, I think if Surat had been alive, he would have... Uh, He'd have a, he would have been with us. <laughs> so Surat, he worked, his idea was, uh, I think, uh, 12 or 17 colors was his, uh, you know, and he was trying to m minimize the amount of color usage. We got it down to three colors. <laughs> Certainly the technique happened because it was you know, the, the, the brightness of the paintings and the luminosity of them was something that hadn't really been seen before. So... <clears throat> that, uh, that that happened, uh, you know, pretty much in the 1980s, and particularly we had a show together at the Willis Gallery. When I left uh, Wayne State University, um, I was very much of the firm opinion that you should not wait around for a gallery to discover you. Um, and uh, I did these series of shows called Bastard Galleries, in which... Uh, uh, because they were bastard galleries, they just appeared out of nowhere. Uh, they had clamp-on lights. Uh, the uh, the Willis Gallery, which had been closed down, I reopened it up as uh, for my first bastard gallery. I just left the lights there and stuff, and it just stayed open. Other people started using it, sort of breathed life back into the uh, the uh, Willis Gallery for another ten years. That show went uh, really it was actually my first exhibition I'd ever been in, and. I sold just about every painting in the show. Lola liked this approach too, and we did a lot of uh, these independent shows. We did no brand shows, which uh, um, you know were again same concept. You find uh, a, like a space, an empty space, which there are a lot of in Detroit, and uh, you would do an exhibit. And this caused a lot of uh, people to so turn up because that's energy. People like energy. They want to see people. Uh, with a, with a bright-eyed and bushy tail and uh, have got something to say and show.